In this lecture, we are going to create a service in our Angular application and we will move the logic of making the HTTP request from the component class to the service class. So till now in this section, we have been making HTTP request from the dashboard component class. And there is nothing wrong in writing HTTP request code in a component class. It is still going to work and we have already seen that. But as we have previously learned, the component class should only contain UI logic. It should not contain any business logic. And this is just a good programming practice which we should follow when developing an application. And when we write the logic of making an HTTP request to the server, it is a business logic. And it does not have anything to do with UI. That's why what we are going to do is we are going to move this code, basically these codes from where we are making an HTTP request to the server to a service class. And doing that will provide us two advantage. The first advantage is this dashboard component will become leaner. It will have less code. And the second advantage is we will separate the business logic from the UI logic. So in the app folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new folder. Let's call this folder services. And inside this services folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new file and let's call it as task service. And it is going to be a TypeScript file. Inside this service file, let's go ahead and let's create and export a class. Let's call this class task service. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's decorate this class with at injectable decorator. Now, in order to use this at injectable decorator, we also need to import it from angular slash co. Now to this at injectable decorator, let's pass a metadata object and there let's specify the provided in property and let's set it to root. Okay, so all these things we already know from our previous lectures. Now inside this service class, we are going to write the logic to make HTTP requests to the server, right? And in the previous lectures, we have learned that in order to make an HTTP request to the server in the class, we need an instance of HTTP client. So if I go to dashboard component there, in order to make this get request or this post request or any other type of request, we are using an instance of HTTP class. So this HTTP property here, it is storing an instance of HTTP client class. So we need an instance of this HTTP client class in our service class as well, because now from there, we are going to make the HTTP requests. So I'm going to cut this line from here or for now, I'll simply copy it from here and we'll paste it inside this task service class. Okay. And in order to use this HTTP client class, we also need to import it from angular slash common slash HTTP. So I'll again copy this import statement from here and let's paste it inside this task service class. All right. Now we are also using this inject method and in order to use this inject method that also we need to import from angular slash co. So now all the errors are gone. All right. Now inside this service class, let's first go ahead and let's create a method for making a post request to the server. So I'm going to call this method create task. You can name it anything. And in order to create a task, we need a task object, which should be of type task. And in order to use this task class inside this task service class, we need to import it from this file. All right. And inside this create task method, we are going to write the logic to make a post request to the server in order to create a new task in the server. For that, we already have that logic written inside this create task method of this dashboard component. So I'm going to copy this logic from here. Actually, I'm going to cut it from here and let's paste it inside this create task method. Okay. Now we don't have this fetch all task method inside this task service. So for now, I'll simply remove it from here. And here we are calling this data as task. So here for the body, we are going to pass the task parameter. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Now, from within this component class, we are going to call this create task method of this service class. For that, we need to inject an instance of this task service class inside this dashboard component class. 
for that let's create a property here let's call it task service it is going to be of type task service and in order to use this task service we also need to import it from this file okay and to ask angular to inject an instance of this task service class we are going to use inject method and to this inject method we will pass the type and the type here is task service in this way inside this task service property we will have an instance of this task service class and on that instance so inside this create task method first of all i'm going to access that instance the instance of this task service class and on that we will have a method called create task and when we are calling this create task method of this task service it is also expecting a value for this task parameter so for that we are going to pass this data parameter to this create task method all right with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and currently in the database we have one task let's go ahead and let's create a new task and let's see if this new implementation is working or not so i'll click on this create task button there let's create a task let's say maybe demo task one let's add some description Okay, and now let's click on this create task button if you go to the database you will notice that a new task has been created in the database and if you want to see that in the ui we will have to refresh the page for now so now you can see we can see two tasks in the task board all right so this new implementation for creating the task is working as expected let's do the same thing for delete task and delete all task and after that we will also implement the logic for fetching all tasks from the database in the service class but before we do that let's first create methods for deleting a single task so i'll call it as delete task and this method it is expecting an id of the task and this id it is either going to be a string value or in this id we will have no value so i'll also set its type as undefined okay so this id it will either have a string value or it will have a no value because this id is optional in this task class right and in the same way let's also create a method for deleting all the tasks so let's call it delete all tasks and to this delete all tasks we are not going to specify any parameter then let's go to dashboard component.ts if i scroll down we already have the logic for making a delete request to the server in order to delete a single task as well as in order to delete all the tasks so in order to delete a single task we are going to copy this logic or i'll cut it from here and we'll paste it inside this delete task method okay from here also i'm going to remove this fetch all task method so we don't need to pass any callback function as well here and let's do the same thing for delete all tasks so we'll cut this logic from here and let's paste it inside this delete all task method and again we don't need this callback function so i'll remove it all right let's save the changes and now let's go to dashboard component.ts and there from within this delete task method we are going to call the delete task method of task service so here let's say this dot task service dot delete task and when we are calling this delete task method we also need to specify the id of the task which we want to delete and we are going to get that id inside this id parameter so let's pass it here in the same way from within this delete all task again let's access the task service and from there let's call delete all tasks and there we don't need to pass any parameter with this let's also save this dashboard component class let's go to the web page and let's see if the implementation works or not so when i click on this delete button and if you go to the database you will notice that the second task has been deleted from the database and if i click on this clear tasks so first of all let me refresh the page now it should only show one task and when i click on this clear tasks button it should delete all the tasks from the database currently we only have one task so that task should get deleted so let me click on this clear task button let's go to the database and there you will notice that that task is also deleted so the delete task functionality and delete all task functionality it is also working as expected
now let's go back and let's implement the functionality for fetching all the tasks from the database okay for that inside this task service i am going to create a method and let's call this method get all tasks you can name it anything and from within this get all tasks method we are going to make an http get request so i'm going to copy this logic from here the logic from within this fetch all task method let me actually cut it from here and let's paste it here all right now here we are also using this map method this map operator from rxjs library so we also need to write the import statement of this map operator inside this class so let's go to the top of this file and what i'll do is i'll copy the import statement from dashboard component so from here okay and let's go ahead and let's add it here let's save the changes and now that error should be gone but we still have one error and we will fix it in a bit now here you notice that when we are making a get request to the server it is going to return us some response now what we are doing is we are transforming that response by calling this map operator of rxjs right and this map operator is also going to return us an observable and we are subscribing to that observable here now what we want is instead of subscribing to that observable which is this map operator is going to return instead of subscribing it here since we want to use the data which this observable is going to return in the component class in the dashboard component class we will not subscribe it here we will subscribe to it in the dashboard component itself because it is this dashboard component class where we actually want to use the data right so i will remove this subscription logic from here okay now this map method it is going to return us an observable but we are not subscribing to that observable so currently we are not subscribing to that observable anywhere and what we want is from within this get all task method instead of returning some data we will simply return the observable which this map operator is going to return for that here let's write a return statement and now this get all task method it is going to return us an observable it is going to return us the observable which this map operator is going to return and that observable is going to emit this tasks array so the task array which we are creating here and we want to use that task array in our component class so from within this get all task method or from within this fetch all tasks method we are going to call the get all task method of this task service so again let's first access the instance of task service and on that we are going to call get all tasks method now what this get all task method is going to return us it is going to return us an observable so let's go ahead and let's subscribe to that observable and to that subscribe method let's pass a callback function okay and inside this callback function what we are going to do is we are going to assign this all tasks with the data which this observable the observable returned by this get all task method is going to return us and we are going to receive that data as an argument to this callback function so let's simply call it as tasks okay and now what we are going to do is we'll simply say this dot all tasks equal the task which we are going to receive let's save the changes and now let's also test this get functionality this fetch all task functionality let's go to the web page so as you can see when the page loads it tried to fetch the data but in the database we do not have any tasks so currently it shows this message no task has been created yet but now let's go and let's create a task and let's click on this create task button so that task should be created in the database now in order to fetch all those tasks we can simply reload the page and now you can see that task in the task dashboard so fetching of data so basically the get request which we are making is also working as expected all we have done is we have simply moved the logic of making the http request to the server from the component class to this task service class now one more thing which i want to do is currently if we want to fetch all the data so let's say we have created new records in the database and we want to fetch all the new records as well and display it in the web page we will have to refresh the page right so instead of refreshing the page what we will do is 
let's go back to our dashboard component.html and from there we had removed that fetch tasks button earlier in the previous lecture but i'm going to add it back so i'll copy this line and let's paste it here let's simply say fetch task or fetch tasks and in order to fetch all the tasks when this fetch task button is clicked we can call this fetch all tasks click method basically internally it is going to call this fetch all tasks method and from within this fetch all task method we are making a get request to the server by calling this get all task method of this task service so we are going to assign this fetch all task clicked method to this button to the click event of this fetch task button okay let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now let me go and let me create a new task let's select assign to let's select created date let's select the severity and here let's select the status and when i click on this create task button in the database it should have created one more task and in order to fetch all the tasks we can click on this fetch tasks button and now it will fetch all the tasks from the database and it will display it so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day